Hello everyone, Linker here today with the advanced meta analysis and conclusions of the 1.47 update patch notes. In this video, I'll read through what's changed and explain the advanced impact on gameplay on PvP, PvE synergies, and more. Love this patch, so stay tuned. There's so much to get to so quickly. Starting off with change season, world weather isn't ottoman like, but in FK Arena you'll have changed themes. You'll see this in the city, forest, inn. We haven't seen the animations there yet, but hopefully, in the devs playtesting the inn, made them understand how tedious it is with all the change to furniture sets around. So stay tuned then for finally addressing the furniture issue in this patch. Also, quick note I think my viewers like is how different furniture gives different stats, so making haste furniture like windows for. Damon can make it so his shield has 8 seconds cooldown, 7 seconds duration makes him able to keep it almost indefinitely with his signature item 30, I told you everyone is sleeping on. Anyways, I digress, new voyage of wonders, new wandering balloon, we don't know the rewards yet but Reddit will probably have them soon. Anyways, Artifact Blessing. This is the first part that's huge. More heroes can have artifacts at any given time, meaning you can use the same artifact on multiple heroes. Finally, the devs addressing how outdated the artifacts are. Huge impact around PvE. The mostly matters for the end game players at multi stage fights where you run out of artifacts quick. But it's also impactful around the end of chapter 20s. We'll see why in just a second. As far as we know, and that may change, it will be for every two additional stars starting from the first, allowing an additional hero to use the same artifact. Meaning one hero when you first get it, two heroes at artifact level 3 and three heroes at artifact level five. So if you've been stargazing around the end game, like you should, you'll be able to have two artifacts cover your whole team. Now, it's not a secret Iron Call are the strongest artifacts in the game, both giving haste to some extent. For I, you'll see it used mostly in burst sets, especially multi-carry ones like Aaron, Pharaoh. It's gonna have meaningful impact around chapter 29, where these are the most useful. But then there's also Call, really buffing energy compositions like the God Comp, allowing them three calls, regenerating energy and haste it adds also an unknown factor to PvP. So you can't see the enemy's artifact set, but you can usually guess them. There's some interesting twists like on Legends with three sets. Feral, for example, can use Conviction, freeing up a slot for somebody like Aaron for a call, making him faster. So some guessing games, but since both defenders and attackers get it, it's not that big of a difference in PvP. PvE though, gonna be huge. Remember, we already had artifacts for over half the team at 15 hero men in Legends, so you usually didn't put artifacts on the support heroes like Lorsen, like our Fox, all of these are gonna get it, especially with Lycas change, it's gonna be pretty interesting to see. So World uses martial ratings, not much changed there, but definitely a big change to keep an eye for, for PvE and some PvP modes. Permanent unions don't get too hyped because this is only if you possess those heroes, no other union yet, but it should have a nice visual for you, no special buffs though. Smart furniture selection. So we've been waiting for this for so long. Once a player has over five heroes, they finally, finally say you'll have a quick way to place furniture around. We won't believe it until we see it because we had those promises before that ended up in a weird cog button that was pretty much useless. But this is a big quality of life change that devs are addressing. So that's what we like to see some changes in the arcane lab maybe changing the difficulty we don't know yet but we will have to wait and see it another great feature is the arena of trials saving your past formation used to be tedious to keep doing it over and over again also better sorting on mercenaries added furniture and si symbols in the initial selection page so before you browse meaning easier to keep track of your screath mercenaries supposedly visual guide statue changes so that's the stuff you get from being on top of a abyssal expedition event for example um, let us please bring back the kill wars, that's all we really want for that. Um, maybe less red markers around the Merit Kitchen page. So that's another one we'll have to wait and see. Now for balance changes, and I'll change this in just a second. Hunter's Grass no longer applies damage, since it shouldn't. That's the Lab and Peaks Relic that gives you health when you kill enemies, used to deep damage. 
and we're gonna pass page here. Damon buff the blood shield, used to steal health from the base of the boss. Now we know that Grezzle, for example, who steals attack from TR bosses can work, so I wasn't sure why Damon's damage was as slow as it was, and here it is, it was a bug. Depending on how bad was the bug, it might take Damon to the top of the Twisted Realm like he needed a buff. Next, Wukong. Clones no longer remain on the battlefield after he dies. That was pretty rare as far as I know. Just fix Rosalie and the whole old thing on moving allies stuff instead of this. Anyways, uh, then also we have Foresight applied even if he was knocked down. Damn, that was one of the end game guild PvP secrets. You just Athalia Wukong. He never understood why that works, but it did. Now I get it. Uh, he used to not trigger immunities when knocked down, leading for him being bursted at level by Athalia. So that's his CC immunity. He also has the damage immunity, but uh, he got a buff there now. That's a balance where he couldn't trigger it when it was knocked, so supposedly Wukong is better now. Next, Mahira. Her minions used to remain on the fight after her death. This became meaningful when people started running a 9 on a 9 furniture. Now there wasn't a global consensus on why she was inflicting so much damage even after she was bursted, since those minions aren't easy to see. But that's a bug making her start to appear again in endgame PvP occasionally, replacing Tassie who used to completely dominate her in the god comp. Now the bug is fixed, meaning Mahira's minions will no longer do that, so less damage for her probably locking her into campaign and locking Tassie into PvP. And speaking of Tassie, Tassie was buffed. Tassie does more damage now. You know the fairy that throws dust at you in the campaign? That thing used to target dead Talins and vanished Wukongs, giving you some breathing room. No, no more. Tassie was buffed. Nope, good luck everyone in mid chapter 20s. You're going to need it. That fairy thing does a lot of damage, a lot high, very high scaling, and now it's gonna be targeting enemies while healing allies. A very big challenge. Next, a very late game oriented change that's kind of I like to see, Namora 9 out of 9. Now that's pretty big, as Anthro from the Discord tested, we knew that thing was applying fast, very fast, she was charming enemies coming into her vicinity, I mean, before Sylvina jumped fast. I mean, before Lorsan making him link his own team fast like mad fast. However, the hitbox was pretty weird, so without a complete timed Aaron frontline pull, she would not hit it across the whole enemy team consistently. Now it's slower, but the hitbox is better. This should change her a little bit, making her enjoy grouped up enemies better, going for consistency rather than those crazy interactions, meaning she's gonna be more consistent with Aaron and Screeth comps, but she will probably stop doing the mad stuff she did, interrupting Lorsan mid usage instead of making him link his own team. That's faster than Atholia. That thing used to be faster than Atholia. Lilith, do you think this is healthy meta? Her making Lorsan use the one thing he does against his own team? Really? But I digress, it's slower now, interrupts abilities, hits in a better AoE, so we'll test her as soon as we know uh, how. So we'll test her as soon as we see it to know better. And uh, lastly, Satrana, early game used to stun some enemies she shouldn't have. I think you should have left her and let her have it, because in the early game she's not that good. But maybe it's positive overall, because it makes early Satrana mains wake up. Kind of maybe use Iron, Rowan, Feral, something that's good. Uh, and that's that. Let me know what you think about these kinds of videos. I've been Linker. Peace.